Hello everyone and welcome to yet another fun-filled episode of Painting with Eric. So today we're going to start off with a uh, fun little painting. This is a 20 by 24. Here we are in the studio. And this is a scene of uh, down at Crystal Cove. Uh, the cottages, if you've ever been there in uh, Newport Beach, California. At low tide, there's all kinds of like a rock shelf that kind of goes out and it creates all kinds of really neat little tide pools and little fun places for all kinds of little sea critters to go. Anywho, so that'll be the scene we're painting. Uh, the scene, of course, is off to my left side as I am just kind of uh, copying the picture. Uh, the one thing about painting at the beach is, you know, is that uh, I don't know what you may or may not know about beaches, but a lot of times it's usually the atmosphere is kind of thick. Um, so you always have like a lot more depth of field than what what it appears or what you're thinking, because there's always a lot of um, I guess sea mist, just the, you know, the heavy ocean atmosphere. Uh, what have you. So that's the one thing you ought to kind of have a principle about working with any ocean scene. So anyway, here we are sending the tide pools. Uh, there are other people out and about, but we always ignore them. And so as we build, as we build this painting, uh, you're going to see that eventually everything's going to point up to this big rock that's kind of jutting out at an odd angle. That one right there. That'll be the rock that is essentially the focal area. Uh, it's, uh, you know, off to the left and a little high. That's the focal area that I'm going to point everything to. So it's not right in the center, even though it may look like it in here in this, but trust me. Also, this, uh, this is about a half hour video. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to talk through the whole half hour. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Hey, who knows? But the long story short is, uh, as, as we get to a certain point, you'll see that a painting with this much detail, this much uh, texture to it, you can really go hog wild in trying to uh, put in all the detail to really sell the idea of the scene. And so you have to simplify and, you know, unfortunately you go in, you go out, simplify, add a few more details, simplify, add a few more details, simplify, in order to finally get the final effect that I was going for. Um, uh, now you're going to see that uh, I did not do my hair today uh, because, you know, living life in ours is like being in quarantine permanently. So, yeah, you know, some things go down the toilet. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, so here's our basic drawing. I guess you can say the drawing portion of it. And it's important here to start mixing your colors that are going to kind of end up being the overall tonality of what you want the painting to be. And I'm using this big fat one inch uh, brush thing here. This is a great way just to scrub in a lot of a lot of color that's uh, you know very very washy color because um, we just want to again we're just trying to put in like an overall tonality and so you know I'm, I'm down on the palette and I'm really working those colors together with um, you know, with everything I got there. In, in this particular case, I've got my uh, my white, titanium white, my cad yellow medium, cad red medium, and my ultramarine blue. But in this case, I have something in there called cerulean blue. Why? Because cerulean blue, it's, um, well, A, it's, it's an expensive paint for some dumb reason, but it it's like it, it's already cool it's already grayed out i guess you could say it's a nice grayed out color it's just i don't know it's really good Caribbean or cerulean blue uh and so it makes for a pretty pretty good water effect here because you know a lot of times also i'll use a uh, sap green for the water um but in this case we're going to use um the, the cerulean blue to, to kind of bring it in and so what i'm really trying to do here is of course just trying to you know, again, we're just building the tonality, the texture. This is very wash, uh, very, very diluted color. Uh, and, and we're trying to bring up everything to show what the focal area is going to be. So I'll just keep quiet here for a second as we... Uh oh sorry about that. 
keep quiet is just kind of watch the uh, color kind of come in because now, then we're going to switch over and again we're, we're really the, the working the color on the palette is is really important because now here we're going to come in with the the sand or the you know the rocks the sand whatever and it's very important to get the tonality of it to match i don't want it to be too too strong too weak and so you know you work that color on the palette to really try and get it right before you start throwing them all over the canvas so as we go in we start blocking in all all this color um and again looking at the uh the reference photo uh you're going to see that there's a lot more sand than, than what it appears but i want to get all that water in because you know i want it to show where the, my water is going to be uh, as we come down to the bottom it's a little bit warmer and off in the distance it's a bit cooler yellow and white and i'm using a yellow ochre i'm using a lot of yellow ochre to, to create the sand that's another fun uh, shortcut color i use for a lot of sand you know, for all the beach scene sands so again uh, we're just trying to block in where the mass shapes are and try and create a harmony i guess you can say kind of kind of create how this scene's gonna essentially all fit together so you know here i am down on the palette trying to build to get us more color and there's a lot of paint that goes on this too you know this is a, a big old 20 by 24 here uh i don't want to we we aren't putting in any details in yet uh even though it looks like we are we're still just trying to get these contour lines to kind of show the motion of the painting to lead your eye in to the focal area but we also want to make sure that it's setting everything up right for the uh, the correct color that's going to go in there. Color, the tint, the tone, all that good stuff. We want to make sure it's it's all gelling just right. So let me uh, just be quiet for a second and let you enjoy the process. Alright, so uh, continuing on. Oh boy, so we're just going to continue uh, building up a uh, texture. That's all we're really doing. I'm not really trying to put any details in. I'm trying to make it uh, work in terms of... Well, I am trying to make it work, but it's what I'm trying to do is just, just build up details. Just, you know, some of the shapes, some of the... Uh, you know, the way the, the water is kind of ever so gently laying in the shallow portions of the, of the rocks here. And then some of the rocks wet, some of the rock is dry, some of it's you know, you know, the nice little blendy parts because the silty sand just kind of washes up on the rocks. So that's all I'm trying to do at this point is just is just convey, um, you know, just convey this this peaceful feeling that you're just standing there in the in the shallows of this, and your feet are just lapping in the water or whatever. Anyway, so uh, here we go. I'm just going to continue building up some textures, what have you. Da, 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 da. More textures. This, is the, the, this, this part right here is kind of fun um, because the water was like, like I think the, the, the little rock shelf was like really high. Anyway, there's a just a gazillion... It just a huge amount of texture that just goes into the rocks over there and that's the part of this painting is I mean you can build textures on something like this for days on end but the point is the thing is at what point have you created enough texture to get the idea across without over texturing it to you know have too much attention to it to have uh, you know to make it overwhelm it but you don't want to overwhelm it uh, because I want my subject matter to be the focal area, not all the texture in the background. So, so anyway, we're just going to uh, continue building up this texture and, and going along our lines here that... Uh, we're just going to continue building up the lines with that little texture there. And then also the... the as you'll see a little bit later, the rock actually was just a bit small, and I and I didn't photo, I didn't get it into the, uh, the recording here um, that I fixed it because after I looked at it for a while, I was like, ah, the rock, the, the 
tangent is just too tight. So I made the rock a little bit bigger and brightened it up a little bit, um, as you'll see in the final picture of it. Really put some music in or something like that. I don't know. That was one thing that uh, Ken Oster, I took his workshop way back when. And the one thing, like he put like a, a, a spot of color in or you know some line or something like that. And somebody said, Oh wow, you paint that's in there. He goes, Now you have to paint that in there. So you know, you put a, a piece of color on, uh, or you know, put a little brush stroke in here or there. Sometimes as good as it looks is you still have to like paint it into the picture so it doesn't look like it's some stuck on weird afterthought or forethought or something like that um but anyway so this is what i'm trying to do right here is blend in real carefully blend in the color between the, the wet sand and the nice blue of the water um as it'll, you know because you want the, the water's going to pick up the sky color as well also for those of you who don't live by the beach whatever um, especially here in Southern California a lot of times the summer you're like oh the summer and the beach the summer usually we have uh, what's called May gray and June gloom and this past year oh my god it went to like July or something like that usually in the morning it's like it's so thick and overcast and I mean the Sun can't even get through and you're just like oh it's so miserable the people are like, because, you know, the idyllic, you know, sunny Southern California beaches, but a lot of times that's only in the afternoon, not in the morning. Or at least not till later in the summer. Because early in the summer you get a lot of, um, a lot of overcast. As you can see here, I'm starting to put in lighter and lighter colors um, as I'm trying to build up the texture. That's, uh, you gotta keep it consistent throughout the whole painting. Uh, so I'm looking for that, you know, the, the lighter areas. But as they come closer to me, those lighter areas are yet even still just a bit warmer because I wanted to warm up and come around or come forward. And the, the, the ones in the background are lighter, but they're also a little bit cooler. Painting, a, painting this size is kind of fun. It really allows you a little more freedom, a little more movement, I guess you can say, a little more time to really try to work up what you're trying to paint. Uh, whereas you go like the smaller 8x10s or what have you, um, you know, you can't put in as much detail or texture that you really want to, as far as I know, I think. Um, but one of these bigger paintings here, you know, you can really just take your time to really enjoy the painting process um you know really enjoy putting the paint on the canvas and moving it around blending it making it do what you want to do so that's one of the nicest things about working a little bit larger so if you haven't worked larger um you know it, it's a skill uh, and you got to find the right size that works for you and your current skill set you know maybe eight by ten is perfect just to get in um, you know, don't overthink the painting, don't overthink the scene, the composition, the texture, the uh, tonality. You just, you know, an 8 by 10 or something like that, you just get in and put in your, your shapes and just try to make your shapes and composition work. Um, you know, as you get a little bit, go a little bit bigger and bigger, uh, you know, the challenge is, I, I personally think, a little bit greater in that uh, you still have to make a bigger scene still work the way that the smaller scene works. Um, but now you have the added thing of having to put in some more texture, more interest, more uh, more thought into making the tonality work. So here we are. We're just going to keep keep progressing through um, adding in yet more and more of this fun fun stuff. If you've never been to tide pools, tide pools are really fun. Um, 
the all kinds of little sea creatures down in there. I've seen I've seen octopuses, I've seen uh, crabs, big ones too. Um, you see barnacles galore, little squishy things that squirt water and then they get all scrunched up with the tentacles. Those are fun. Uh, I've seen, seen some other fun things, but going to the side pools, low tide, it's, it's an adventure. It's a fun little thing to do. I highly recommend it. One thing you can see here in this picture is that that rock, I guess you can call it the rock, whatever, it's the ground at the four part, that, that like narrow one right here in the middle. Uh, the, the, that color of the rock and the, <clears throat> the one that's sticking up, um, If you look at it, you can see how the, the one in the foreground is a lot warmer than the focal area one. But, is what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a lot more contrast at the focal area one. Whereas the one down below does not have as much contrast. Look at that brush. Just dance all over the place. Oh my gosh. That's a dancing brush. Oh, that'd be a good name for a studio. The dancing brush. Might be interesting. I don't know. Let me know if you do it. So as we build up uh, more, more and more texture, more and more, you know, the land, uh, the, you know, the, the, the sand and all that good stuff as opposed to where the water is, um, it's just a process, but it's it's a fun little process to paint like this. Uh, so anyway, so we're just going you know, to keep working it and working it and if, again, making sure that the, you know, if you look at horizontally, it works in the, the gradation from the foreground to the background. It has to have the same amount of consistency. You can't have something in the foreground way over texture in the background being like too simple or vice versa. Um, so the, the, the consistency of the texture has to be, um, you know, consistent to lead to the in and through the painting. Okay, so you can see uh, I've kind of chopped up the video here to kind of move things along. Um, but the, the, the point is still the same. I'm just still building and building and building texture. Um, again, there's, in trying to, you know, lead dry to the focal area or whatever. Um, but the fun part is, I mean, just like how much fun this is. I mean, how can you just not be having fun here? Anyway, so, uh, you know, so I'm just going to keep going with pretty much within the same palette color. I mean, it's all the same colors, just I'm using like variations of tinting to get to go through this. Um, I don't know if you put a camera on the palette so you can see. It's really the same puddle of color. It really is. And that's how you can get a real consistent tonality. Um, yeah, it, just, it just makes it real easy. It's not like you have to like re-figure out, oh, is this darker, is it lighter, is it this, is that. You just say, oh, no, it's this color right here. Oh, no, it's that one right there. Oh, no, it's this puddle. Oh, the whole thing on color mixing would be fun. But anyway, so as you can see, we're just we're just continuing our fun-filled adventure. All right, so here we are. We're going to start putting in the background. Uh, it would be a waves coming and crashing in, what have you. And so we're just going to build up this. Uh, this background. I'm not using just white. The white has a just the smallest titch of yellow in it. Okay, yellow medium. Um, and of course, you can see there's other rocks out there in the uh, horizon. It has the waves either crashed up to them, around them, swirled around them, what have you. Uh, but there's the, the other rocks out there. And the, so, you know, and still though, I mean, even, even at low tide, you can still have big waves. Uh, just a matter of where they're crashing. Um, so anyway, uh, so we're just putting in, this is basically the waves that we're going to put in here and, and, and just use the positive shape of the waves to build up the 
uh, background, or I'm sorry, the uh, negative shape of the of the uh, foreground there. And it will some more in there. We're going to uh, we're going to work on that rock a lot more. Uh, bring up a lot more contrast in it. So anyway, so as we put in the, the, the waves, and that's just the general idea of the waves, so to define some of those rocks out there in the background, we're going to put in the sky. Now the sky may look a little, a little dark or whatever, but the truth of the matter is, um, you know, when you have this like, you know, heavy atmosphere, this, you know, really kind of, you know, this overcast stuff, it, it, it kind of looks like, it looks like dark and gloomy out there, because it kind of is. Um, but this was like in the morning, this seems kind of in the morning, and this is looking kind of like northwest, um, it's kind of northwest paint. In the sunset, as the sun would set over the east, you get a totally different over overcast sky, and it gets really kind of cool to be honest with you. Um, as the sun is, you know, over the ocean, and the clouds are up in the sky, and there's no other land in the way, yeah, it gets kind of cool. Uh, so, so what I'm doing is, is I'm just trying to build in this, uh, this overcast uh, feeling that we have here. And it, the sky, it, it, it kind of does look like that. It's like a darker, heavier sky lower down. And then it kind of gets lighter uh, up, up above it. it it's, it's, you know, you got to experience it. That's all I got to say. Um, so we put in the, the sky. Uh, and now we still have to... You know, we're going to noodle with the sky a little bit more, put a little more texture and a little more interest in the sky. But then um, we'll have to go through and start fixing up that mid middle ground, which will be our uh, waves and those rocks in the back there. Okay, so let's just jump ahead a little bit here as we're trying to put in some of the details and, and work up the texture of the, the incoming waves. And uh, trying to not bump the camera. The other thing is, uh, so usually there's like a little shelf out there, so like the water's coming up to the shelf, uh, and then it'll, you know, kind of filter in or whatever. So at, at no point would you ever be standing here and be like, get like some wave come up and wash you out. It, it just wouldn't happen. <clears throat> I don't know what other places, but around here, it doesn't happen like that. You know, you get like some water creeping up on you first and maybe a big wave will come up and you know like wow well, that's neat but it won't wash you away or anything so you're also trying to put a little more uh contrast in with that rock and you can see a little thing there is going to irritate me um but we need to make that background work out just a little bit better with the water is it still churning and crashing out there All kinds of fun stuff. Blend, blend item. Don't want the the sea to be too too harsh because you usually get a lot of sea spray that just comes up off the top of the waves. You know, you usually get a nice uh, soft edge there, whereas the stuff coming up on the bottom is going to be a little bit harder on the edges, but, um, <clears throat> oh, always sign your paintings, gotta sign it, but, all right, let's see if we can, I'll, I'll bring up the, uh, the final painting now. So, here's the final product, it is, uh, oh, I, you know, I, I don't take good pictures of my work, I don't know how, anyway, uh, like and subscribe so that, you know, I can feel like I'm loved or something like that, I don't know. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. Uh, you know, it's a Tide Pools 20 by 24 oil. It was fun to paint, and I hope you watched and had fun watching.